Hello guys and welcome back to a new video. If you will enjoy it, don't forget to leave a like and share your thoughts in the comments to help me boost this video. Thanks. Story 1 At first I know the owner experience. I own a small housekeeping business that I put my clean freak daughter's name on. For the sake of the story, we'll call it Rachel's Clean Glove. We have one client on a fixed income. But she can't clean for herself, we'll call her SH for sweetheart, so we work and trade for quilts. And other treats, Rachel loves to go with because we just love her to the moon and back. One week we stopped by, and her granddaughter, GD, from here on was there. While we were getting all of our supplies ready, GD walks up and says, I expect you both to do an amazing job. I am close friends with the owner, and if you don't do your very best, I will have you both fired. Are we clear? I have never seen her before in my life, and ask her what the owner's name is. She tells us she goes to church with Rachel. We don't go to church, so we both just shrugged and went to work. GD kept peeking into the rooms we were working in, but not saying anything. After we each finished the smaller rooms, and meet up to work on the open living room and kitchen, GD tells us to work quietly, or she's going to call Rachel. My daughter and SH both chuckle. And I told her to go ahead and do it thinking maybe someone with the same name as my daughter said they were the owner. GD said she didn't want to bother her at work and for us to just keep it down. I had enough of her and made more noise and would have stopped if SH had said something. Rachel brought the vacuum into the living room and GD lost her mind screaming that we were interrupting her shows and if we don't stop she will have a word with Rachel and have us both fired immediately. Rachel is an incredibly kind person, and when she wants to hit someone, she puts her hands in her pockets, closes her eyes, and counts to ten. And as soon as GD opened her mouth, I saw her do just that I tell her that I know 100% for a fact Rachel is just standing around with her hands in her pockets doing absolutely nothing but trying to hold her tongue. And the owner is not in a good mood, so pick which one she is going to call Rachel or the owner. She screams Rachel is the owner or her name wouldn't be on the business. SH tells her Rachel is the owner's teenage daughter. Since she has a cleaning addiction, the business was named after her, and the owner and Rachel are the only two who come to her house so we can continue to work and trade. GD looked at us all in shock and ran outside. The reason for this post is to vent. GD lacks self-awareness so much that I just threw away her application. Story 2 Customer is always right. Used to work in my mom's deli. We used to do weekly specials where my mom would make a big pot of something or a pan of something and she would serve it as a special for three or four days. And whatever will be left would be tossed out and she would make something new as she was always afraid something would go bad. This lady came and demanded something we had on special the week before. Saw my mom cleaning out the fridges by sticking her head through the back door to the kitchen and demanded that my mom give her the rest of the lasagna that was in the fridge. When my mom told her no, and to get her head out of her kitchen, a lady came storming up to me, and demanded that I fire her straight away for insubordination, and being rude to a customer, that she demanded to see the owner right away, and couldn't believe the disrespect. As the customer was always right, she saw that she had the food available, and was mad that we wouldn't serve it to her. Try to carefully explain to her that it's over its sell-by date, that we can legally sell it in as a countermeasure to make sure nothing goes bad. As we don't freeze anything, and remake it as we don't have the space. And these are just specials cause this is a deli not a restaurant. She wouldn't hear it, demanded to see the owner, and refused to talk to either me or my mother who was trying to explain things to her nicely. In comes my stepdad from out back in the office. And this lady immediately started screeching at him, only for him to finally get her calm down enough to hear him tell her to get the F out of their store and never come back because he just insulted the owner and the kitchen manager. I don't remember the exchange and conversation, but it was pretty epic when she finally shut up and he cut her right down to the bone dot 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 LOL. Story 3 But I really do know the owner. Little bit of backstory for context. I used to live in Southern California. My stepdad was in the military, and we moved around a lot. I started high school in Ka, then moved to NC, where I graduated. I've been back to Ka twice since I moved. Once the summer after I graduated, to visit my father, 
and my friends from high school who still lived there and wants to see an old friend graduate from college. It's the second visit that is the background for this story. So I had come to visit my friend. Let's call him Rob because he was graduating from college with a master's degree in computer engineering. I was spending two weeks in Cali and was planning to spend some of that time seeing my father and also catching up with the good friends I had missed seeing from high school. Two of those friends, Ken not real name and Andy not real name, were friends from high school while Rob was a friend from church. Rob and I actually had a relationship until I moved and it was the long distance that finally separated us, but we were still good friends. Ken and Andy were top musicians, and Ken ended up opening a restaurant, jazz club in the area. Ken was the actual owner, while Andy was in charge of the bands that played there, one of them being his own. I'd heard about the restaurant, jazz club, and decided to surprise the both of them by coming to visit. I called around our friends, and after begging them to secrecy, found out which night they would both be at the restaurant. I then went there, planning to eat dinner and hang around until I got a chance to see them. I'd been sitting for a while, enjoying my delicious meal, when the server came up to ask how I was doing. Server equals server, and GR equals manager. Me equals me accolade storm conversation is not 100% accurate. It has been a long time, and my memory isn't as sharp as it used to be. Server, is everything okay over here? Is there anything I can do for you? Would you like more coffee? Me? Oh, everything is fine. The food is delicious. No, I'm good on coffee at the moment, but there is something you could do for me, please. Server, absolutely. What can I do for you? Me? Would you tell the owner that there's a customer here that would like to speak to him? When he gets a spare moment, of course. I had a big smile on my face as I said it. The server's smile slipped a little bit. Server, is there a problem? Please, just let me know and I can fix it for you. No need to bother the owner. Me? Oh. No, nope, I'm sorry, you misunderstand me. Everything is fine. I'm an old friend of Ken and Andy's from high school. I haven't seen them in years. I'm in town visiting and thought I would come by and surprise them. I'm looking forward to seeing them after all these years. Looking back at it now, I realize how it might have sounded to the server, but this was back in the 90s. Entitlement wasn't as prevalent then as it is now. Or at least stories weren't as widespread as they are now. So, I was a little put off by how her smile changed, and how her eyes rolled. Server, miss, it's going to be busy, right up until closing. Me? Oh, that's okay, I don't have any plans tonight. I don't mind waiting. The server just sighed, gave me a nod, then turned and walked away. About five minutes later, an official-looking guy walks over to my table. The server was at the server's station, but I could tell she was listening. And GR, I understand you were asking for the owner. Me? Hi there. Yes, I wanted to see Ken when he had a spare moment. Or Andy. Either one would be fine. And GR, the owner's going to be really busy all night tonight. And the entertainment manager has nothing to do with the restaurant side of things. And the manager for the restaurant and the club. What seems to be the problem here? Me? Oh, there's no problem. Everything is great. I explained to the server, I'm an old friend of Ken's and Andy's from high school. I'm in town visiting and decided to surprise them tonight. And GR, so she said. But as I said, he'll be busy all the way up to closing tonight. Me? Oh, that's okay. I don't mind waiting. I can take in the band. I love live music. And GR, look lady, we don't cop meals. We don't do discounts unless there was a major problem with the meal, which I can tell by your empty plate that there wasn't. We don't move people to the VIP section without prior notice from the owner, entertainment manager, or myself. There are no notices for VIP guests tonight. And there's a $20 cover charge for anyone staying to hear the band. No exceptions. Me? Wait, I wasn't asking for. And GR, lady, I've heard it all before. Old friends from high school. Old friend of the families. Old girlfriend from college. Maybe you even went to the same high school. We've had quite a few of those, too. But just because you went to the same high school doesn't mean you actually know him. Me? But I do know Ken and Andy. I used to sing with their high school band. Andy was my big brother in high school. Look, if you tell either of them that Lady Storm is here, I'm sure they will want to come say hello. And GR, Andy, your big brother. Sure. He looked at me funny when he said that. Perhaps it's because both Ken and Andy are black, and I am as white as white can be. Lady, you need to pay for your meal and leave. 
I won't have you causing a scene in our club. If you won't leave on your own, I will have to have security, or the police come remove you. Me? Wait a second. How am I causing a scene? I came to this place to see my old friends from high school. I don't think I've caused any problems for the server. I haven't complained about anything. I'm perfectly capable and willing of paying for my meal and the cover charge too. But I'm not leaving until I see Ken and Andy. They're the whole reason I came here to eat instead of somewhere else. And GR, I'm afraid you leave me no choice. Server, will you please go get security? As the server was heading off to get security for the manager, Andy was walking to the sound booth, which is next to the server's station. I saw him and stood up. Me? Yo. Andy. Andy turns around to see who was yelling at him and saw me. The manager turned to look at him and watched as Andy's eyes got big and round and a big grin spread across his face. Late a storm. Suddenly, he jogs over, picks me up and spins me around in a great big bear hug. Andy, late a storm. What the hell? I didn't know you were in town. When did you get here? How long are you here for? Why didn't you call me? If we'd known you were coming, we'd have reserved a spot in the VIP section for you. He turns to the manager. Go tell Ken to drop what he's doing and get out here. Tell him Lil Sis is in town and came to see us. He turned back to me. Ken is going to be shocked as hell to see you. And GR, Lil Sis, you actually know this lady. Andy, yeah, she's an old friend from high school. She moved after her sophomore year. We haven't seen her in like, what, eight years. She's the singer you've heard in half the demo tracks from our days. The manager did go and get the owner, and a few moments later I was getting my second bear hug of the night. My meal did end up being comped, cover charge was waived, and I did find myself in the VIP section for the rest of the night. I actually DID tried to pay for everything. Ken and Andy wouldn't hear of it. Ken and Andy ended up calling their wives. They both married their high school sweethearts. And the five of us were up almost until dawn catching up together. It was a fantastic night. To be completely fair, the server and the manager both apologized profusely for their assumptions. I did understand and forgave them, telling them it was good they were watching out for my boys. But it does go to show you, not everyone is a Karen. Sometimes someone will tell you they know the owner, because they really do know the owner. Story 4 So much fun, so shoot them down, when you are the owner. A few years ago, I opened a brewery, restaurant, bar with one other business partner. We grossly underestimated how busy we would be after opening, so we both took shifts dishwashing, busing, running, hosting, serving. Just what you do when you open a place. One fact that is relevant later, we had an awesome mural on one of our walls. Both of us were on it. It was a busy night. We were slammed and understaffed. I was running the host station and a few tables, doing my best. It a four top of, from my initial look, jackasses. Go up to the table, and before I can say a word, one of the party immediately comes at me with this. Customer, we are friends with the owner. He promised he would take care of us. We have been waiting a long time. The oh, so you know business partner's name. He's not in tonight, but I'll do my best to help you. Pointing to him on the mural. See, no, we know the other owner. Close family friends. And, well, ma'am, there are only two owners. And the other one. Points to me on the mural I've never seen you before, but I'd be happy to take your order when you're ready. They shut up pretty quickly. Left a good tip for the staff. Story 5. I know the owner. I'm going to get you fired. I used to work overnight at a large motel as night manager. One night a number of years ago, there was a wedding reception. One of the guests came up to the desk early in the evening and bragged about knowing one of the owners of the motel. I listened politely but really didn't care. At two in the morning, the reception was closed down. The guests went to their rooms, while those who didn't have rooms should have left the property. Less than a half hour later, I started getting noise complaints. It turns out that the same guest took a group back to his room to continue the party. I stood in the doorway to the inn announced in a loud voice that the party was over. Everyone who is a registered guest needs to go to their rooms. Those who are not guests need to leave the property. You have 15 minutes to clear out otherwise I will call the police and evict everyone. If I do that, there will be no refunds. The guy from earlier came to the door and told me that he would get me fired if I went through with what I said. My response, then I will be fired for doing my job. I ended up calling the police and clearing everyone out. 
and I wrote a report on the incident, including the name of the guest. I sent copies to the front desk manager, the general manager, and to my boss. A few days later, I was told that the guest was banned from ever coming back to the motel again for any reason. He did, indeed, know one of the owners. When the owner found out what he attempted to do, he dropped the friendship immediately. Story 6 I don't even get paid. From not always right. Years and years ago, I worked retail as a miner. This was the 1980s, so in some non-corporate businesses, you could get away with this. I looked more grown-up than most kids my age, probably because I dressed more adultly than was usual for a dinky little gift shop. Customer, you have to give me a discount. I know the owner. He always gives me 50% off of everything. Me, lady, I really doubt that. Customer, I know the owner. I'll get you fired if you don't give me the discount. Me, oh, would you, please, please get me fired. Customer, what? Me, he's a slave driver. He doesn't even pay me. I want to be fired. Customer, W what? Me, the owner is my dad. Now get out. He would never give anyone a 50% discount because we'd be losing money. She went all red with embarrassment and rushed out without buying anything. I had to put back everything she had brought to the counter, but it was worth it just to yell at someone. I was the only one in the shop that day since I was covering for my dad, so I knew I wouldn't get in trouble. And it's true I wasn't being paid, but my parents paid for my college so that I didn't have any student loans, so I guess that was fair compensation. Story 7 I'm calling the owner and getting you fired. Wife and I opened a store together many moons ago. We had two employees that worked with us, and I guess one of the employees made noises like he owned the place granted never while we were in earshot. One day a customer comes in, and asks me a question can't remember the conversation exactly. And I gave an answer he didn't like terribly much. Then he tried to argue with me about it. Finally, he said I know the owner, and I'm calling him now, and I'm going to get you fired, and proceeded to pull out his cell phone. Well, employee who was moonlighting, as the owner's speculation on my part, but it fits, was in our break room at the time, and I heard his phone ring. He answered, and they proceeded to have a quick conversation, and the employee walked out to see the guy. Customer then starts venting to the employee and says, I want this asshole fired now. And the employee had to inform the guy that I was his boss and actually owned the company. The customer left shortly after that and then sent his wife in to get the stuff he needed from then on. Story 8 I actually do know the owner dot dot dot, but the waitress doesn't know that. My friend dot 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 will call him Matt dot dot has a really nice mom and pop pizza shop that does deep dish Chicago and flat AF New York style pizzas. I've known Matt for a while and my two friends and I will work on do maintenance stuff for his store and he gives us pizza in trade. Anything from fix his doors, replace glass, upgrade the audio and speakers for music to security cameras, we do it and it's one less thing he has to worry about. So one day I go up before they open to do some work. Matt says, come back this evening. Pizza is on the house. Being a professional fat man, I come in after the evening rush and place my order with the new waitress who doesn't know me yet, dot dot, this is key. I can see Matt in the back doing boss things, then he comes out to check on customers, do the meet and greet thing, finally makes it over to my table right about the time the waitress brings me a refill. So I start bitching to Matt about the wait times and any other little stupid stuff, just awesome Karen shit, and finally pop up with I know the owner Mike, and I'm going to let him know about this. Remember, I'm talking to Matt the owner. And the new waitress is standing there with a look of terror on her face. That goes, go ahead, I'll wait. And at that point, I started laughing and asked if I needed to adjust the new door hardware I had installed that morning. A look on that girl's face went from oh crap to total relief. When she saw it was just a joke, she turned out to be a really good waitress and would go get Mike when I stopped in. Story 9 You know how I know you don't know the owner. Work in a Greek restaurant, and the owner and his wife are very hands-on. They're there practically every day, all day. One night a guy comes in and demands that he gets a patio table. They're the most desirable tables. But our patio is small, and can seat 16 max. Well, he's sold because none are available, and the empty one is already spoken for. 
He starts chewing at the GM blah 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 and says, I know the owner and he's going to hear about this and storms off in a huff. Little did he know the owner was sitting at the bar within earshot and heard the whole thing while the owner's wife was standing directly behind the guy laughing her ass off the whole time. Perfection.